it's uh, an honor now to uh, have uh, Secretary Muniz ad address the, the group. Thank you, Secretary. Thank you, Paulo, and uh, thank you, Jane. The um, uh, Jane, you noted that your your service on the Energy and Commerce Committee uh, there seems to be uh, uh, not a quite a consistent uh, tone of humor actually in the in the hearings these days. But uh, uh, nevertheless, we look forward to to working with them. Also, you uh, uh, rooted for your home team in California. I'll just note that. Uh, I was a graduate student at Stanford, and uh, the cartoon I had kept posted was a car driving along a road with a sign saying, uh, leaving California, resume normal behavior. Uh, <laughs> Jane, you have to get the message. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> uh, let me also add my recognition to uh, uh, Minister Laffer and uh, Ambassador Harrington, who uh, actually, I think, worked together in the science and, di and diplomacy realm, uh, in fact, uh, in the uh, late uh, 1990s. Uh, and uh, my friend Brito, uh, known for quite some, quite some time, uh, and uh, our man of the forest, uh, Tom Lovejoy, who I just learned today actually implemented biodiversity as opposed to naming it. That's it's really, really, really fantastic. Uh, but the, um, uh, it, it's, really, it's really good to be here. The Amazon is clearly um, you know, one of the world's most vital uh, ecosystems, and that's no, no secret to anyone uh, one here. Um, important, really, for, really important uh, globally uh, and uh, in many dimensions, certainly that of, of climate change, uh, the kind of the ultimate global, uh, global challenge. And I think, you know, part of the backdrop here um, uh, in that context is that for Brazil and the United States, uh, kind of the two continental scale um, uh, largest economies of North and South America, uh, respectively, this, first of all, there's some good news. I mean, over these last years, uh, we have both seen uh, a reduction uh, in our carbon dioxide emissions. Unfortunately, we've also seen a slight uptick uh, in the last uh, in in the in the last year. Uh, our pathways uh, to lower CO2 were different. Uh, in uh, in Brazil, uh, very much uh, driven by, in fact, how the Amazon uh, is uh, managed and stewarded. Uh, the United States, uh, through uh, some of our energy developments. Uh, both on the supply and the demand side. That is, on the supply side, uh, natural gas uh, development, uh, substituting for coal, uh, but also very strong energy efficiency measures on the demand side, uh, such as uh, more, more, uh, more efficient vehicles. Uh, the uptick, uh, of course, we in, in both cases has been associated with, uh, with um, uh, energy production, uh, and um, and so in, in in a sense we we really share uh, a challenge uh, going uh, going forward. Uh, again, as part of context, it's it's probably worth worth reemphasizing that in these last years, uh, the Western Hemisphere has been a really active place uh, for energy activities uh, from the n all the way from the north to the south. Uh, the, uh, the Canadian and U.S. Uh, certainly uh, dramatically increased uh, uh, oil and gas production. Uh, Mexico going through a very substantial energy sector reform, e renewables throughout Latin America, Brazil, among other things, uh, are looking to develop the pre-salt, and Argentina going to the south in terms of an enormous, the Vaca Muerta, uh, enormous uh, natural gas resource. So, you know, it's, it's, if you think about it, if you go back to the beginning of this century and now, I think in the Western Hemisphere, we, we look at uh, the energy situation in a, in a very different way. Uh, 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 which can be very good for our economies, uh, good for our security, but of course we have to manage all of this in the context of addressing uh, the climate challenge uh, that, is, uh, that, is, that is so, so important. You know, here in October, I know you've all been partying uh, for the last month in recognition of National Energy Action Month. Uh, I'm sure you all knew the, of the presidential proclamation issued uh, at the end of September, uh, and um, uh, while, uh, while you've been partying, I've been traveling uh, uh, you know, to New York, Texas, Missouri, Kansas, Nevada, 
California, the Reagan Center, uh, and um, uh, looking at, at these, these activities. And I might say there was a it was very interesting, actually, in Texas uh, uh, two weeks ago, uh, I was uh, uh, keynoting a, 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 a conference on innovation called South by Southwest Eco. And uh, the, the happy coincidence uh, is that my introduction uh, uh, ended up being a short film clip, uh, a two-minute uh, clip uh, uh, produced by, the, by Conservation International as one of a series of clips uh, with the theme uh, of Nature Speaks. And it was uh, prominent uh, uh, personalities, uh, Harrison Ford uh, taking the role of you know, the ocean or uh, another major, major Earth system. And, uh, and for my introduction, it was Kevin Spacey uh, as the rainforest. Uh, so I think very appropriate uh, as, we, uh, as we come to this, uh, to this meeting. Uh, and then uh, another happy coincidence, uh, um, our, our uh, friend here also in the first row, Denise Milan, a, an artist who uh, has been working on nature speaking uh, and the rainforest for, for years. And then earlier this month at the Kennedy Center, um, uh, producing the opera, opera Florencia in the Amazon. So this has been a role on the Amazon. Somebody is giving us a message uh, that, uh, that, uh, that we have to pay attention and that this meeting is clearly very important. So in this meeting, uh, obviously, uh, we all know we need uh, uh, the very best science, the very best scientists. Uh, there was that modesty when you didn't respond to the call for uh, the really uh, top scientists, but we know you are, uh, to understand the changes taking place in our, in our rainforests uh, uh, and the effect that climate is having and will have uh, on these ecosystems uh, globally uh, and how, how do we best uh, uh, preserve them. And that's, of course, where, where all of you come in uh, and uh, uh, as... Uh, uh, President Laffer said uh, uh, we are very pleased uh, at the Department of Energy uh, to be a partner and to continue this partnership uh, on this, uh, on this uh, science. So I'll just say a few words uh, today about, uh, we'll get to some of, the, uh, some of the collaborations, but I also want to touch a little bit on our broader efforts here uh, in terms of, terms of addressing climate change. Uh, the, uh, this is a critical period as we feel, uh, uh, in, we feel in the run-up to uh, the meeting in Paris uh, via, via Peru uh, because uh, basically uh, I th we think that uh, we really need, it's a, it, we need a transformational moment as to how we globally all work together uh, on, uh, on, the ca on the challenge of climate change. We just don't have time to go through another five or six year cycle of not, uh, of not moving forward. So, the, uh, again, this audience, uh, once again, I don't have to tell uh, uh, about the importance of, of rainforests, about the Amazon in, uh, in, in particular, uh, and its role in, uh, in global, uh, the global ecosystem, uh, absorbing CO2, producing oxygen, uh, known, uh, the Amazon basin known as the lungs of the world for, for, for good reason. Uh, the, the resource certainly has been under strain, and, and globally we still see a lot of uh, rainforest uh, uh, challenges. We know what deforestation of uh, rainforest means in terms of greenhouse gas emissions, uh, feedback loops, uh, temperature and climate, uh, altering precipitation patterns, uh, uh, and reducing ecosystem uh, services. Uh, so again, uh, we in the, the U.S. government is, is very pleased to engage uh, in, uh, in this research in, in the Amazon basin uh, to in in increase our, our scientific understanding and ultimately contribute to conservation uh, of this resource, specifically the Green Ocean Amazon uh, program, Go Amazon, uh, uh, is, is one that we uh, really support. The department has deployed uh, our atmospheric uh, radiation measurement climate research mobile facility to Manacapuru, uh, Brazil, uh, where it will remain through the end of, of next year. Uh, and, and giving researchers, some of whom uh, clearly are here, uh, unprecedented capacity to observe aerosol, cloud, and precipitation interactions uh, in the Amazon basin. Uh, complementary ecosystem measurements will also provide information on the processes that control emissions of organic compounds uh, from tropical vegetation. We also deployed aircraft, G1 aircraft, to sample aerosol properties uh, during the wet and dry seasons 
uh, again, better understand how chemical processes uh, between biogenic emissions from the rainforest, pollutant outflow from the tropical megacity, Manaus, uh, how they uh, can uh, interact and disturb uh, aerosol uh, formation and properties. I was very pleased when I was in Brasilia uh, uh, a year ago, August, August 2013, it was very uh, felicitous that uh, 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 in a, a meeting with uh, Minister Rop, uh, we were able to confirm Brazil's approval at that time of these overflights for the Go Amazon uh, project. And I know early results are, are emerging from these programs, uh, including uh, measurement of, of increased ozone levels, clarification of hydroxyl levels, uh, seasonal shifts in atmospheric uh, uh, particles uh, associated with the Manaus uh, plume. So as part of this collaborative effort uh, with Brazilian researchers to better understand atmospheric and ecological interactions, uh, we have also just uh, awarded uh, nearly $6 million uh, for six research projects uh, to focus on climate predictability, both regionally and globally uh, across uh, the tropics. Now these, these investments are clearly uh, uh, a small part of a, of a very large uh, U.S. effort to address uh, climate. And on, and on the home front, uh, uh, the president last year, June 2013, uh, issued uh, a climate action plan uh, that sets out uh, our efforts in three dimensions. Uh, mitigation uh, of climate change risks, reducing greenhouse gas emissions fundamentally. Uh, secondly, adaptation to what we are already seeing as the impacts of global warming and climate change, and finally, uh, international uh, cooperation. Uh, these are three areas that uh, we hope uh, to extend uh, our collaboration uh, with, uh, with Brazil. On the mitigation front, I'm not going to go through a long description of what we're doing, but let me just say uh, very importantly, and this maybe goes back to the original, again, comments by our uh, host, uh, uh, Jane Harmon, uh, that uh, the President expressed very clearly uh, the preference for working with, Congre with, working with Congress uh, in a uh, kind of a government-wide, economy-wide uh, approach uh, to, to climate, uh, but in the absence uh, of that uh, partnership, uh, he also emphasized that uh, we can't wait, we're not going to wait, uh, and so the Climate Action Plan issued last year is comprehensive to the extent it can be using only existing authorities in the executive branch. Now that in its that uh, does provide restrictions. Uh, it 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 requires more sectoral approaches, uh, but on the other hand, the flip side of it is. By definition, it means we have the authorities, and what I want to make it very clear is we will execute on that plan, and we are executing on that plan. Whether it's the EPA uh, in issuing uh, its, uh, its proposed rules for emissions from power plants, uh, aiming at a 30 percent uh, reduction, whether it's uh, having much, much more aggressive vehicle efficiency standards, uh, especially light-duty vehicles at the moment by 2025, heavy-duty vehicle rules coming, uh, coming, coming soon, uh, or the, the Department of Energy uh, aggressively pursuing efficiency standards. We have issued twice the number of standards in half the time compared to the preceding years, uh, and we'll continue to do that because, again, we have the authority to do it. Uh, we will use our convening power. Uh, for example, we have 11% uh, of the country's uh, industrial manufacturing footprint in our Better Plants Challenge uh, for 20 percent reductions in, in energy efficiency. Technology innovation, in many ways, our sweet spot, uh, pursuing cost reduction of clean energy technologies. Our loan program, uh, we have $30 billion in play uh, to advance innovation and deployment of clean en energy technologies. A lot of people know that. Fewer people know that we have $40 billion in remaining authority, and we have every intention of, of using that. So uh, just the, to note that we will be uh, uh, ambitious uh, in, moving in, uh, in moving this forward. Now, uh, adaptation is the second pillar of that plan. 
uh, that's an issue for us. It's an issue for Brazil. It's an issue for uh, many, many countries, of course. Uh, uh, and that goes all the way from uh, preparing for the inevitable increase in things like major storm surges, uh, threatening energy infrastructure, and other, of course, uh, critical services in society, uh, to, uh, de to designing the energy infrastructure of the future. Uh, which will not only be more transactional for the economy, but will be more resilient to threats, be they extreme weather or cyber or physical or geomagnetic, you name it. Uh, that's the kind of program that we are, uh, we are looking at. And of course, international collaboration, as I've already said, the road to Paris is a, uh, is a, is a critical one. Uh, we are working actively with uh, a number of countries. Uh, we are looking to Paris uh, to have uh, ambitious, inclusive, durable, and fair national approaches put forward uh, in that, uh, in that uh, context. And uh, as I said earlier, uh, we are executing on our own program and, uh, and um, uh, we'll, we'll continue to, uh, to do so. Clearly, in order to reach an agreement uh, that will satisfy our needs, uh, we will need developing countries, emerging economies, developed nations, all on board, uh, understandably with differentiated approaches, but the hope is, again, everybody in the, in the framework of being ambitious, <laughs> durable, uh, 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 fair. So um, again, it's an area that we certainly hope uh, to be working with um, uh, Brazil and, uh, and many of our other, other, other friends. Um, certainly, U.S.-Brazil energy cooperation is not something new. We've, uh, we've been doing that in a number of areas, uh, in biofuels, for example. Uh, we've worked closely to uh, promote biofuels development in our, in our two countries. Uh, uh, we are kind of the big guys on the block uh, uh, here in terms of, in terms of uh, biofuels. Uh, and also, for example, close collaboration in specific areas like uh, future uh, aviation. Uh, biofuels. Energy efficiency, another area of, co of collaboration. One, you know, just one example, Department of Energy, again, uh, collaborating uh, with our Brazilian partners. Uh, we are working to establish uh, an independent testing laboratory at the Federal University of Santa Catarina uh, to provide efficiency ratings uh, for windows and other other building building components. Uh, we're working with uh, CPEL, uh, the Electric Power uh, research uh, center uh, to assess approaches to improved energy efficiency in industrial plants. Again, good for the environment, good for the economy uh, in terms of providing a competitive edge. Shale oil and gas is, a, uh, uh, is an area where the United States, of course, is, uh, and, and Canada uh, are, are well out in front, uh, but again, Brazil with a substantial interest uh, in how this, uh, how this might develop in an area where we are certainly uh, very happy to co cooperate in any way that's helpful uh, to bring to bear the vast experience uh, that we've acquired in the United States uh, in, in developing this. And, uh, and in fact, we are working with the Ministry of Mines and Energy to share best practices uh, uh, for, for, for Brazil. Uh, one of the most important forums that we've had uh, going on over these last years uh, has been the U.S.-Brazil uh, Strategic Energy Dialogue which was uh, launched by, uh, by Presidents Obama and Rousseff in 2011. Uh, and um, uh, we believe this can remain an important mechanism. Uh, and uh, we are uh, eager um, to uh, set a date uh, for uh, and to host, it's our turn, to host uh, the next meeting of the dialogue here in Washington, D.C., uh, 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 hopefully early, uh, early in the next year. So in conclusion, Again, as I said earlier, you know, our countries, we're the largest economies of North and South America, respectively, uh, continental in scale, leaders in energy in, in multiple dimensions, and I think with, with shared values in environmental stewardship. Uh, and so we hope that this uh, Go Amazon uh, collaboration uh, will be one of the continuing contributors uh, to a vibrant uh, partnership advancing our national agendas and our global aspirations. Thank you and best wishes for a successful meeting.